Dave, uh, thank you very much for joining us live on the program. Uh, can you take us through why the EU have asked for borders to reopen on June 15th, especially considering that many countries in Europe have officially closed down their frontiers at this moment in time? It's really out of a concern for the tourism industry in Europe. It represents 10% of Europe's economic output. And sites like this mannequin piss here in Brussels behind me really suffer when tourists don't come because there's a whole ecosystem around tourism. Here on this street where mannequin piss is, for instance, there are chocolatiers, there are hotels, there are tour guides. All of them are closed and out of work at the moment, which is causing real concern. So the European Commission here was trying to find a way to reopen tourism without putting people's health at risk. They're trying to strike a balance here. What they've recommended is a phased approach, basically in which the general bans that have been put in place in borders and uh, closing tourism outlets would be replaced by more targeted bans. In a first phase, they are recommending that countries start easing the border restrictions between them, that countries with a similar health uh, position could establish travel corridors between them. So for instance, if uh, France and Italy had a similar uh, situation with COVID, they could have a travel border between them. But the commission is warning that there still can't be any discrimination based on nationality. So if France opened its borders to Italy, anyone who is an Italian resident should be able to come in, not just Italian citizens. And now the other big thing the commission wanted to clear up today was these rules about aviation. Uh, Airlines, who are really facing very severe liquidity crises, have asked the Commission to suspend normal EU passenger rights law, which requires that they refund passengers for cancelled flights. The European Commission said today it will not give in that that law remains valid. Passengers must be issued a refund. The airlines can't make them take vouchers. But they're saying that the airlines should try to make ways for vouchers to seem more attractive to consumers, for instance, by not time limiting them. The other thing people were really watching today was if the Commission would require social social distancing on airplanes. The airlines have said that's just not an economically viable model to leave so many pla uh, seats empty in a plane. The commission did not require or even recommend that today, but they did say that national governments could put such social distancing requirements for planes in place if they wanted to. And Dave, we've seen the EU row over several uh, aspects and topics in the past couple of weeks uh, because of COVID-19. And of course, um, you're saying that, uh, that tourism and, and aviation is one of the main reasons for, for opening these borders back up again. But with countries, individual countries having the final say so, is there perhaps a risk of even more arguing within the EU, within its member states? Yes, and that's what they're trying to avoid here. They're trying to avoid a repeat of the chaotic situation at the start of this crisis when each government was pursuing their own policy. Strand, uh, passengers were left stranded at airports. They want this to be done in a coordinated manner. But, of course, different countries are pursuing different strategies. They have to acknowledge that realistic uh, reality facing them because the Commission doesn't have a lot of power in these areas. So it can only issue guidelines to the member states and say, look, uh, uh, Eurocontrol, the head of the air traffic control, uh, associations for Europe has said that if these measures aren't done in a coordinated way, if countries start disagreeing and putting in different uh, restrictions without consulting other countries, uh, tourism will not recover this year and maybe not even next year. The situation could be really dire. So the Commission is saying, look, national governments, we may not have the power to force you to do a lot of these things, but if you don't do them in the way we're recommend recommending, in a coordinated way, your economic recovery is going to be a lot harder. So they're hoping to avoid disagreements with member states here. Let's see how they respond to these guidelines and recommendations issued today. France 24, David Keating in Brussels. Thank you very much for that analysis. Thank you.